Yeah, the answer is yes. The answer is yes, tech can help agriculture in Hawaii. We have living proof today <laughs> with two guys who put the Ag Tech Conference together. Um, there's Jim Wyban and Jason Uweki. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you, Jay. Happy to be here. Thank you. So, you know, it's a dream come true in so many ways. I recall once uh, Think Tech did a, a luncheon panel program about agriculture, and some guy came from Silicon Valley, um, and he was really interested, and he pulled me aside, and he said, I want to know more about agriculture and why I want to invest. And I have a hui who wants to invest from Silicon Valley. We're all very rich. Okay? I, was, I was so excited, and I sat with him and sat with him and sat with him, telling how great I thought the possibilities were. And after a few weeks of investigation, he came to me and he said, well, I've investigated and now I'm going to invest in hotels. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what did we miss here? Yeah. We have to make it possible for this guy to come back and actually make an investment, him and his hui, and make a return in agriculture. And it's not the old plantations. It's diversified agriculture. It's modern agriculture and it's tech agriculture. Okay, so tell me about your vision of this, Jim, by man. Okay, thank you, Jay. Um, you know, Hawaii has a tremendous uh, agricultural tradition and a long history of innovation in agriculture, going back to the original colonizers, the Polynesians that came to Hawaii, brought with them what we call canoe plants, you know, taro, bananas, coconuts, uwu. And they did that. It was very brilliant of them. They did that so they would, knew that they would be able to grow food when they finally landed in Hawaii. And ever since then, Hawaii has been an ag agriculture innovator. And, you know, then it would go all the way up through the plantation era and stuff. And ag was a huge part of the uh, economy at the time. But once the plantations started to close, um, the amount of, the, you know, the revenues coming into the state in agriculture started to shrink. And, you know, you hero has documented it's a 30 year decline from the time that uh, sugar started going away. The amount of revenues and the percent of our GDP in Hawaii from agriculture is on a steady decline. And we're now less than Less than half a percent of our GDP comes from agriculture, which is, you know, compared thinking about our history, it's quite a sad statement. And yet, Governor Ige, you know, made us made a, a proclamation a few years ago. He wanted to increase the amount of local food production significantly. I think that was a very noble goal and worth working towards. And we saw in COVID you know, the disruption to uh, supply chains are very real. And so we really need to address this issue. But uh, to date, we're still left with kind of a legacy style agriculture, while the rest of the world, particularly California, is rocketing forward in incorporating technology at all levels. And that's what we wanted to show people in Hawaii was happening elsewhere. This is what ag in 2022 actually looks like. And so we brought a lot of smart people together to tell us about uh, how it's working. Yeah, and dealing with the challenges, uh, such as the challenges that California has with water, like that. Oh. Yeah, but I, you know, one thing you said, Jim, I, just, I think it's worth just dwelling on it for a moment. So somewhere in the late 19th century, you know, Hawaii had changed. Missionaries came, everybody studied religion. They got to read and write and print newspapers in English and, and Hawaiian. Um, the government changed, the monarchy got more sophisticated and all this. <clears throat> By the end of the 19th century, we had these plantations, okay? And uh, the plantations got bigger and bigger and bigger until they all fell apart um, in the 50s and 60s, right around statehood. <clears throat> and so what's interesting is that in the process, the original native Hawaiian growing techniques, feeding yourself, got lost. It got, it was, it was completely, you know, all the oxygen, so to speak, was sucked out for the yeah. big plantations, for selling crops overseas, making uku bucks with it. Um, but the, but the, the notion of feeding yourself in the, what do you call it, una, um, you know, those agricultural areas, 
Ahupua'a. Uh, Ahupua'a, I never get that right. Um, the, the, the notion of dealing, you know, uh, with the land, um, you know, that kind of went away and the ability yeah. to feed yourself went away. So now we find ourselves, A, without the plantations, B, without industrial agriculture, which I don't really think we want. That's my own view. And yeah. C, without the ability to feed ourselves, which is really critical in this Dangerous. problems with supply chain. So uh, in walks Jason. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, enter Jason, and Jason has some ideas. And, you know, Think Tank has been following this uh, for 20 years. And, um, you know, and we've considered and, you know, heard about so many tech ideas that would uh, uh, make it easier to grow things from every part of the world. And some of them have worked, some of them haven't worked. Some of them clearly, you know, are, are um, humbug, may I say. Uh, and, and some of them are very promising. And so I ask you, Jason, with all of the possible technological advances, uh, with all the technology that could help, what's your favorite group of things what are the things that are going to give my 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 investor from silicon valley a return on his money uh what are the what is what's the technology that's going to make it easier for people to get into the business local people and feed us uh well you know ag tech is uh, very comprehensive it actually covers um biological technologies uh, uh engineering and also digital technologies and I think what the most attractive opportunity is, is to transform our agriculture system here in Hawaii uh, with the digital technologies and be able to incorporate some of the things that are transforming other industries and in include them into our agriculture system to help us boost our productivity and efficiency to get us to a point where we can produce product at competitive prices, but we're importing them. That, that's the main issue. So it's not about um, necessarily working harder, but definitely smarter. And digital technology, technology is the way to get there. So for instance, you know, the digital world can take in information that humans maybe have a hard time processing quickly, and we can get real-time data to make decisions and farm smarter. And, and eventually we'll get to a point where it, um, it can actually give us an early warning to adverse events and therefore save crops from failing. Yeah, and that's a that's serious problem. consideration given the extreme weather possibility with climate change. You know, you spend the whole season growing crops and then have them destroyed. You know, that's a big problem. And if you can anticipate that, it's better. So um, you, you talk about data, talk about you know, information technology. Um, can you draw us a picture of what that looks like? Is it is it my PC on my farm? Uh, is it my PC running some programs? Is it my PC on a network where, where I get weather information and I have somebody else doing the AI processing for me? Uh, how do you see that unfolding? What's the most powerful way to help me? Yeah, it's, it's probably integrating uh, all of that, right? And including your phone. Our phones are, are very powerful today uh -huh. uh, compared to the computers we had you know, decades ago, our, our, what we have in our pockets is, is a lot more powerful. And so we wanna integrate what we have carrying with our farm workers and our farmers on site with satellite technology, with a data center, with the AI and the machine learning backing that up to give us that real time data on the spot so that we can then implement the best practices right then and there. Yeah, okay, and you talked about biology. What is the biological solution that would help my young farmer? I'll let Jim take that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the, the biological technology that we focused on in the conference, you know, we divided the conference up into four half-day segments. But before you go well, too far with that, let's hear about the conference. So you had a conference <laughs> okay. two days yeah. ago. It was called the Ag Tech Conference. Yes. Uh, it was organized to demonstrate technology that could help agriculture. So, you know, define, describe the conference, and then we'll go into exactly what you, you know, uh, presented. 
Okay, uh, so the conference was officially Tropical Ag Tech Conference, and we very much wanted to, you know, that was a conscious strategic choice to focus on the tropics, because at this time, a lot of ag tech that's happening elsewhere is focused on uh, industrial agriculture in California or the Midwestern United States. And, and we see the tropics, you know, Hawaii as an example, but the tropics have very different problems, S much smaller farms, uh, irregular terrain, different crops. So, uh, you know, that we consciously chose to focus on the tropics and actually as a strategic choice. So the solutions we come up with in Hawaii are relevant to all of our friends across the the southern the global south that is all the tropics and you know um one data that we threw out in the conference that was is a very interesting thing to ponder is there's 500 million farms in the tropics okay 500 million smallholder farms when you talk you say about tropics you're talking about latin america uh latin america africa the pacific rim you know southeast asia southern china you add all that up and it's about 50 it's going to be 50 percent of the world's population in a few years mm -hmm. and there's 500 500 million small farms spread across all those so we believe that technology that is developed in hawaii in tropical ag tech is relevant to all those places and you earlier alluded to the silicon valley guy you know in the investment arena they first thing they want to know is can it be scaled can you scale that's how investors make money well maybe growing uh papayas in hawaii you know has a limit you know there's only so much space and so much market that doesn't really scale but the technology scales right if you expand it to the all of the tropics and so that's another component of our strategy for this conference is that we want to help Hawaii develop these um, ag tech tools that work on local crops and stuff. But we have a we have a bigger concept in mind that that technology that we figure out here in Hawaii by adapting and adopting ag tech has global uh, relevance and a global market. 500 million farms. That's not, that's not trivial. And to, some people to that say heard nothing those, about saving the world to say nothing. About there you go. Half the, <laughs> half the world will be in the tropics by uh, 2050. So we, we think it's relevant on a lot of, on a lot of levels. So, you know, I didn't answer your question no, no, about no, biology. I, I, Sorry. I won't let you go. What about okay. the biology? <laughs> oh, you talked about papaya. Now that's a you know the success there is a GMO by a local guy who studied at Cornell, as I remember, and yeah. came back and, and saved saved the industry in papaya. Saved the industry, absolutely. And it's the it's the one go to example of GM technology that actually helped an industry and helped the the customer base. It was very it was very beneficial. Uh, you know, whereas, you know, the big companies that controlled that technology, that was so they could sell more chemicals. It wasn't about making healthy, sustainable food. It was to sell more chemicals. So I think that was a bit of, honestly, my view is that was kind of a disservice to that whole technical. So but, but you're not talking sells. about GMOs as the kind of technology that you would export. I mean, uh, no, no, we're not. We're not. Sorry, uh, we're not what, advocating that. What, what is all. the biology that you would export? Can you give us some examples of that? I have a great example <laughs> for you, and I was intimately involved in it, and you interviewed me about it. And it was SPF <laughs> shrimp broodstock. That was technology born in Hawaii, right here on the Big Island. And you know, once we figured out how to do all the packing and shipping and blah blah blah, and open the markets up. Once we opened up those markets in Asia, we literally changed the world. We changed the world. The productivity of the shrimp industry from Hawaii broodstock went up sixfold. So we see that as, uh, you know, sort of a best case model for what could happen if we, 
develop uh, really cool tropical ag tech uh, tools and breeds and so forth here in Hawaii, that stuff can be exported to the world. And I see it, you know, I was the first one to develop SBF shrimp commercially and market it and develop that market. I see this situation in tropical ag tech as a parallel situation. It's wide open. And we had people like, for example, one of our speakers was from USAID. Dr. Ku does a lot of work in Africa. And he's telling us he would love to see Hawaii be a technology development platform for the tropics. This is AID talking that way. So we're not, you know, this isn't, you know, fantasy. This is this is a real opportunity. And some of the v, some of the VCs that were at the conference were uh, gaga over the number 500 million farms. I'm gaga right now. <laughs> <laughs> but SPF means something about disease resistant. Uh, that's uh, specific pathogen free. It means mm. they're disease free. Yeah. Disease okay. Free. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so, you know, one of the problems, Jason, is that we don't, <clears throat> we have a successful venture, a successful model in the shrimp and the broodstock, um, but you need land for that. <clears throat> On the other hand, it seems to me that uh, information technology can make it more efficient, whatever we do, and we can do more on a given foot or acre of land. Um, and thus, um, you know, the broodstock can be done with less land. At the same time, you know, the largest landowner in the state of Hawaii is the state of Hawaii. And you, you need you need to have, um, you know, support from the government, um, not only from the governor, but from the legislature and and from DLNR and whoever, whoever else is involved. And of course, the Department of Agriculture. Um, so what about the land problem and the use of technology to make every acre more efficient? Uh, broodstock and anything else. Yeah, that, that's a, an excellent point. Um, you know, the the land issue is that it's it's not just agriculture that needs a lot of land. The housing problems we have here, energy. There's a lot of competitive uses for land right now, and so trying to make or do more with less is actually what's going to be needed moving forward with agriculture and add to that, that we have to do it in a much more envir environmentally friendly way. Uh, the current agriculture system and our food system accounts for some 30% of the greenhouse gas emissions and you know, consumes about 70% of our fresh water resources. So technology and management, smarter management of land and resources is going to play a key role in doing more with less in a better way. And so we could definitely use all the help from technology, but also you brought up politics. We need incentives from the government to help our entrepreneurs and our farmers uh, develop and implement these technologies. Well, incentives might include um, land for one thing or cheap land. You know, the, the old argument about uh, why we don't have diversified agriculture is that um, you, you can't get a long lease or buy land cheap. And then as a result, the bank will not lend you anything on a short-term lease. Yeah. And so you can never get the capital to buy the equipment and all the things you need to be a farmer. Uh, the legislature could certainly help with that. It can incentivize, incentivize landowners and, and for that matter, bankers uh, to make farming more possible. And then of course, um, you know, you have tax credits, the tax holidays, all kinds of incentives. I mean, if we sat around for half an hour, we could develop 20 of them, right? And really all good. Uh, and and uh, so why isn't that happening, Jason? This is a hard question. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we need to um, have our farmers maybe um, be a little more vocal support. You know, they, they're all, always busy on their farm. And, you know, Jim and I had a shrimp farm. And so there's no days off. The, they don't take a day off, so neither do the farmers. And so I guess um, giving them a, a platform to um, maybe express their uh, voices for the needs and, and for help, and so that we can have more support for our farming community. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have we have to get woke. <laughs> have to get woke on this um, before it's too late. You know, I mean, because if we had a bad storm, if our supply line was interrupted, um, you know, you can't live at McDonald's. You simply cannot do that. And McDonald's only has one month's supply in reserve. Yeah. So prepare to be hungry. Uh, you know, I mean, I would like to see uh, local produce, especially produce that's healthier, uh, and fish, um, you know, sweep into the restaurant industry, sweep into the supermarkets and all that. So um, tell us, Jim, what else um, you had to present at, at the um, Tech Ag, Ag Tech Conference uh, that might have been interesting to investors from far away, to landowners, to um, to technology companies that might collaborate with and affiliate with and partnership with um, our people at the university and otherwise? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a great question. And that sort of uh, is encompasses what the whole conference was intended to do is to bring a bunch of smart people together so that they could form new relationships, you know, network and the possibility of uh, projects. So, um, you know, we uh, brought in a couple, for example, we, we have close affinity, you know, I, I'm married to Jason's mom, right? Jason's my stepson. He doesn't, we don't look alike, but it's through <laughs> marriage, but- um, oh, Well, you look you know, alike conceptually, you look alike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> Japanese, right? So uh, Hawaii, we have strong affinity for Japan, you know, because of a lot of commonalities. But also in the ag space, quite similar, you know, in ag agriculture in Japan is small, small farms and, and a lot of the technology and stuff, but things are kind of uh, taking off there in, in the ag tech space. So we brought two Jap representatives of Japanese corporations to Hawaii for the conference, uh, both NEC, you know, the uh, electronics corporation and Nisui, which is a seafood company, so that you know, Hawaii folks could hear about what's happening in Japan, and conversely, the Japanese guys could uh, see what's happening in Hawaii, and maybe, maybe, maybe there's an opportunity to interface and interact and form projects. And I think that that's going to be one of the outcomes of the conference. Uh, you know, I can't say too much and let the cat out of the bag, but I think some projects are going to develop as a result of this and folks are talking about Hawaii as a platform for ag tech development for the tropics you know uh, one, one thing about um, doing agriculture in Hawaii um, is um, you have a very small market here um, and, uh, and 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 then and on the residential side of things People are going to go to Safeway and buy what's ever in in the counter. They're not going to make a distinction. And and if the you know the pro, the produce from Chile is cheaper, they're going to buy that every time, especially when they don't have money to spare. Um, so how do we deal with that? I mentioned early on, you know, that the trick was to have people invest in in farms in Hawaii and in these agricultural technologies and developments and partnerships uh, and make a return. So to make a return, you have got to sell at least locally and maybe beyond that, maybe to all of those 500 million places around the world. Um, but in order to do that, you're competing with Chile. Mm -hmm. So Jason, can we use this technology to, to, get, to, to sell at a cheaper price? Uh, are we there now? And if we cannot, use this technology to sell at a cheaper price, how do we sell? That, that's an excellent point. So uh, we are not there yet and we need to get there and technology I think is the way. And that includes not just um, productivity and efficiency at the farm, right? And you kind of, um, we're talking a little bit about that. It's actually, we need to tech enable the whole food supply system to make it more efficient so that we can reduce the pricing at a more consumer friendly price. And I think that is kind of where disruption will come is if we can figure out that to be these technologies to be cheap enough so that it can be wide, widely adopted uh, across the state. And we integrate the whole thing so that the, the farm 
production is connected to the demand and we streamline that, that's a way that we can reduce the, all the inefficiencies in between and, and bring the pricing closer to where it needs to be. And I think we can get there, but it's gonna take a lot of work because it's quite a complex system. So um, we, on the positive side, we can attract investment dollars to develop this technology and these systems that we can then not just use here in Hawaii, but as Jim was pointing out, there's the rest of the tropics to then uh, distribute this technology to. So I am, I am very hopeful and I think, uh, I think it will happen. Yeah, good. Okay. We want that. We want to be awash with local, uh, local uh, crops because then we could have this, this kind of global brand, Hawaii, the place of new diversified high-tech agriculture. And that alone, that brand would bring people to our doorsteps um, to buy the produce, to buy the broodstock type of products, and to buy the technology. You know, I'm reminded, Jim, of a uh, of a, a, a couple of shows that we did way back 10 years plus with a company called Safe Water Systems. These guys developed um, a way to purify water using solar power. And uh, it, was a, it was a plumbing solution. Um, and they patented the valve in the plumbing solution so that they had some control over the intellectual property. Mm -hmm. And they would deliver this to developing countries and they would give it away relatively cheap. Uh, they, were, they were very altruistic in the sense that they wanted to help the world. And mm -hmm. also, you know, they did recover some money for the, um, you know, the safe water system, water purifying system, which did not require any electricity at all. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm, I'm wondering about um, the, your, your uh, connection together, your partnership together, um, and, this, and the technology here about whether you are taking steps um, to get into control of the intellectual property for some of these devices um, and then taking them to those 500 million, you know, offshore places and trying to do, do good works, uh, eleemosynary contribution, but also recovering your cost and maybe a modest profit. Uh, in order to save the world, because I, I look to you guys, nothing much, no pressure. I look to you guys to save the world. Uh, <laughs> but what, what about that? I mean, are, 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 you, are you trying to control intellectual property? Are you going to get patents? Uh, are you going to get trademarks? Uh, are, are you going to have the kind of um, device uh, that uh, Safe Water Systems had? Well, uh, Jay, we are operating as a nonprofit. You know, we made money in the shrimp root stock business and exited that happily and everything's good. We don't need to make money, but we're doing this as a nonprofit and we see ourselves more as a facilitator, you know, bring people together, encourage pro uh, projects to happen, call on our, we have extensive overseas networks, uh, particularly Southeast Asia and, uh, and there and call on those relationships to uh, bring attention to Hawaii. So we really think, you know, we have a role to play in facilitating all this, but we're not trying to acquire uh, control over any particular technology at this time. Okay. So, so what is the future though? Um, talk to me about the future of your adventures with technology, Jason. Uh, what, what's on your, what, if I had to look at your desk right now, <laughs> what would I see there? <laughs> uh, a lot of notes um, scribbled here and there. No, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to inspire Hawaii and Hawaii's entrepreneurs and researchers and agriculture people to take a look at the opportunity that's before us. You know, as was mentioned earlier, um, climate change is really disrupting uh, food production in the tropics today. And it's only going to get more difficult as climate change continues to worsen. We have now the, you know, uh, social, political things going on that are disrupting our food supply as well. And so the opportunity is, is huge for young people to develop solutions that are climate friendly, or uh, in the USDA calls it climate smart, and help small farmers make money. We really have to do that. We have to create solutions that give farmers value. And if we can do that, 
uh, entrepreneurs can make a decent amount of money and it's a very strategic cause as well. We need to feed each other, right? So um, there's no getting beyond that. And so we have to come up with these solutions and Hawaii we believe is the perfect place because we have all of these microclimates that, that look exactly like a lot of the places in the tropics. So that's kind of where our, our minds are at with trying to develop this conference. And we're trying to encourage Hawaii to take an, um, a good look at this is an opportunity to diversify our economy and increase our food security. Yeah, and, and, and the diet around the world is changing. I think people around the world are recognizing that a, a diet without meat is, is better. Um, and, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, people are going into um, veganism and the like. Um, and uh, I think in the future, there will be more of that, including in chain restaurants. Um, and, and if you can generate products like that and make Hawaii fa famous for it, make Hawaii a sort of a vegan place with all these, um, you know, healthy, uh, clean, clear, uh, efficient and fresh fresh, a big word, uh, mm. products. And, um, you know, you'll, you'll go a long way to do that. Uh, I think that the restaurant industry uh, is in the process of trying to come back and in trying to come back, it's, it's, it's repositioning itself and you can, or you are part of that. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about the closing remarks. Uh, you want, let's, let's, let's go to, uh, you first, Jim. Um, I'd like you to make closing remarks to the to the public and to the government. Uh, what would you leave with them? Well, I my comment to the public would be, you know, when you go shopping, think first of buying local products. You know, this is what helps our community, what helps our farmers succeed. The growth of the CSA model since particularly since COVID started has been really encouraging and a lot of farmers are now dependent on that type of community uh, distribution of their products. That's a fantastic thing. Uh, my message to the government is, wow, ag in Hawaii needs help. And, and I think governor's Ige of goals set of more local food going into the schools and more local food produced instead of the 90% of, of imports that we do now. That's noble, but we need more money. It's, it, these things don't happen without money. I think they need a strategic plan for agricultural development in the 21st century and then fund it and go for it. And that's not just buying land in Wahiwa, that's implementing technology, it's helping farmers and all that, so. Okay, and now let me go to Jason and ask for his, uh, his comment. And my question to you, uh, is what is your advice to the young graduate, somebody who likes to get into technology, like and you know, likes to believe as you do that technology can solve these problems and give us leverage and uh, for that matter, profit and comfort uh, here in our economy? What's your advice to those people? Yeah, so I guess my advice would be to take action, right? Um, sometimes we think we have good ideas and we're a little paralyzed by that and don't know where to start, or well, you just got to get started. We, Hawaii actually has a lot of successful entrepreneurs in various fields and technology included. And um, so we, we have the support ecosystem is developing quite nicely. So I would ask for help. I would seek advice and whatever your problem, whatever problem you think you're solving, you have to get down to the end user because really it's about creating value for that end user. And, and we really need to help our farmers, right? And so the value proposition should be around helping the farmer be more productive and more profitable. Because if we, if we can't get our farmers to be profitable, you just can't scale the industry. And so that's where, that's where the opportunity lies is to provide value to farmers while being good to the environment and good to the culture and society around it. And it's a huge challenge, but the, the market is huge as well. And it's a, it's a very um, strategic need to, to feed ourselves. So I would just say, go for it and find help. And Jim and I are here to help. Yeah, not only Hawaii, but the world. Uh, I noticed that. 
Well, let me let me say this, that, you know, although we get distracted uh, here in Hawaii, as in the country, with things that really aren't important, that are distractions, this has got to be at the top of the list of priorities. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I wish you well, we wish you well. Think Tech has covered agriculture for a long time. And to, to see you together as an agriculture and technology uh, partnership is a, is a beautiful thing. And I hope you'll come back and talk to us and tell us about all the things that you couldn't tell me about today, Jim. Okay. okay? And yeah. as for you, Jason, <laughs> I think you ought to develop a, a new shrimp that only works six days a week. <laughs> when you, when you, when let you let me write this down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Jim Wyman, Jason Wicky, thank you very much. Hello, Aloha. thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.